Solicitor General at the time is Perlman, and Perlman um, uh, tells Phil to draft a brief supporting a claim against restrictive covenants, and that is the case of Shelley against Kramer, which is a very, uh, very important case in the in the uh, line of cases leading up to um, Brown versus the Board of yep. Education. Uh, the restrictive covenants were very importantly enforced against both blacks and Jews. And they kept uh, they they kept whole areas of cities and suburbs, pretty much lily white and Christian. You know, it, it's hysterical to think of it, but. I can remember when I was 10 years old, my brother had, uh, had passed away, and so my family couldn't live in the same apartment in Chicago anymore on the west side because of the nicest. Too filled with memories. So he went looking around on the north side of Chicago and the suburbs for a new place. And we were on this street, I don't remember what street, there was one house, a whole block, every, nothing but a prairie, and a whole block. And uh, this was in Skokie. One my house. My hometown. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. And uh, my parents look at it and they say, you know, well, why don't we look at that? It's for sale. No, you, you can't look at that. They don't allow Jews here. Skokie. <laughs> that actually happened. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, just the irony is that yeah. when my parents bought their house in Skokie, it had a restrictive covenant in it. Did it? But you couldn't, by that time, I'm sure you couldn't enforce them anymore because Shelley had right. been on the books for it years. It had been on the books and it was unlawful, but it was, yeah. on, it was in the covenant, it was in yeah. the contract. <laughs> that actually, so, uh, yeah. and anyhow, okay. So Perlman did that and Phil wrote the brief and they won the case. They write a brief and it's a showing the flag, as Phil puts it, a showing the flag kind of a brief. Yeah. 150 pages laying out the position of the Truman administration to do something about the problem of restricted housing. And um, um, what's interesting about that, and I think there's, a, there's, a, there's, an ironic, there's an ironic aspect to that anti-discrimination position of the Truman administration. Uh, Phil tells me that um, when they drafted the brief, they put the name on it of Tom Clark, yeah. who was the Attorney General at yeah. the time, um, which is unusual because attorney generals don't usually sign. Right. This was a way of briefs. signifying to right. the court. This was a way of saying this is th this is a major, major um, interest of the government of the United yeah. States. Yeah. They put the name of, of Philip Perlman, who was the solicitor general, of Philip Elman, who was the assistant attorney general, and of the other attorneys who had worked on the brief, Hilbert, Hilbert Zarkey, Oscar Davis. Stanley Silverberg, who were all special assistants to the Attorney General. <laughs> and it goes to another uh, member of the Justice Department, Arnold Rahm, R-A-U-M, who is Jewish, and he crosses off the names of the last four si right. uh, signatures right. on the brief. And he says to Phil, it's bad enough that I have to have uh, Perlman's name on the brief, right, right. Gotta, but I have to put Perlman's name there. But to have uh, uh, to have four more Jewish names on it is impossible. We've got to take them off. Yeah. Um, it makes it look like there are a bunch of Jewish lawyers like in the Justice Department. Like a plot cooked up by a bunch of Jews in the Department of Justice. Yeah, yeah, I think so. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law a leader of a form in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.